What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Seton Hill Studios. Hope you're having an amazing day out there so far. So today we have a priority request coming in from Terry. Terry, thank you so much for your continued support of the channel. It means so much to us. Terry's wanting us to check out Gary Moore, and this time we're looking at The Messiah Will Come Again. So we've seen a couple Gary Moore videos. He blew me away with his live performance of Still Got the Blues. The tone, the feel, just the overall playing and technique was just phenomenal. I also got to see the unfortunate um, audio incident on the Midnight Special where the engineer just forgot to turn up Gary Moore's solo, um, which was just, that was just tragic. You hate to see it. Um, but now with this Messiah Will Come Again, I have no real frame of reference on this one. It looks like a long tune. I don't know if it's an extended version for live or if it's just a long song, um, but I'm excited to get in and check it out. I know he's going to do it justice and I know he's going to blow us away. But before we get going, a few ways you guys can continue to support the channel. Right down below, if you haven't already, you can hit that subscribe button. It's an easy and free way to show some love. You can also head on over to Patreon and become a member there. If that doesn't work for you right here on YouTube, you can become a channel member. Both of those are going to get you access to priority requests as well as other perks and features. And then as always, with a one-time donation through Buy Me A Coffee, you can get a guaranteed request either Steven or I will check out right here on the channel. All right, y'all, let's get into it. All right, y'all, here we go. Gary Moore, the Messiah will come again. I know it's going to be good, so let's get it started. Love that organ, man. Such a cool progression to solo over. Ooh, rolling up that volume. I love that he went down there. This is vibrato. Man, <laughs> so with the way that it was going in the beginning, more of like a free time thing, it was, um, I don't want to say misleading, but I didn't expect the band to kind of come in with more of like a full time groove there. I thought it would have been like a halftime thing, which I think is awesome. So it kind of like sucks you into one thing, what you think it's going to be. And then it's just like, boom, just the, <laughs> the hook out of nowhere just comes for you. And you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that, but I like it. Um, my gosh, man, his, uh, 
you know, I already made mention to the tone and the feel, but wow, his what he can ring out of one note is like actually insane. Um, you know, he's not out here, you know, playing a million notes a second, just shredding it up. He is he is working, working every last drop of tone and sustain and just ev- just out of every note. It's it's actually crazy how much sustain he he has. Um gosh, and his vibrato is just it's almost like so good it, it, you would think it was a fretless instrument. Like it just and it's like he's not doing like the real fast um just bending the string wildly vibrato. Like it's very intentional how he's doing it which just makes it that much more musical and almost like vocal like it he is he really really is incredible um is this he hasn't sang anything i don't know if this is just an extended guitar solo or if this is literally just an instrumental song where he's just gonna pop off for 10 minutes i'd be okay with that too <laughs> Ooh, all right we rolled it back a couple seconds let's let's keep it going I love that note right there. Okay. <laughs> that was unexpected. just took us on a heck of a ride my goodness he went from like the most soulful just sparse um emotional like ballad blues solo to just melting our faces off in in the blink of an eye um there was a lot of cool stuff in that section there one of the things that stuck out to me even more so than the shredding is actually back uh, almost right after the last time that I had paused, like right at the beginning of this next solo section. He's a lot of, again, kind of sparse, very intentional note selection, but how he's getting the notes is not conventional, I would say. He is, instead of just finding the note on a fret, on a string, he's intentionally bending into notes that you wouldn't normally bend into, um, and then holding it there so that he can get a, a certain tone out of it, a certain vibrato out of it, and he can go up or down into another very specific note. And that is, that's some extreme intentionality with your phrasing. Um, you know, cause it's one thing, you know, if you play the same note in multiple places across the fretboard, it, there are little nuances and little differences and how he was playing those was so so unique and so intentional um just things that you just don't think about it's like oh well i need to hit a a b note a high b i'll just play the 12th fret on the b string it's like and he's like well actually i'm gonna bend up to it from the 11th fret so i can have more control of it in a different vibrato it's like oh well that's cool (laughs) 
Um, and that, that wasn't the note he was playing. That was just a, just an example. Um, but then he kicks into the shredding stuff and my gosh, I had no idea that he could shred like that. I knew he could play. Um, he could play fast. He could play clean, but I did not know that he could tear it up like that. My goodness. He's a beast, man. Whew. Oh, rest in peace to the legend, man. Oh my goodness. it is again. Oh my gosh. Hey, I'm, I'm convinced that this is just 10 minutes of him putting on a clinic of every single guitar technique known to man. <laughs> my goodness, man. I mean, his, his alternate picking is insane. His hammer-on and pull-off legato game, insane. Um, throwing in, like, chromaticisms and accidentals, insane. Um, he's walking up runs with alternate picking that most people would have to sweep pick, um, which is, again, that's something I've only ever really seen, like, Steve Morse do. I've never really seen another guitar player do that, um, but here we are. Um, and you know, he's <laughs> the bends, man, they're, they're what's getting me the, the pre bends and the way that he's bending into very specific notes is just, it's genius really is what it is. Um, uh, the volume swells and it, it almost sounds like someone crying or someone screaming, um, like just like desperate, like, you know what I mean? Like just, I don't, I don't really know how else to describe it other than that, but hit he is in the, the bottom line is he is in total control and total mastery over that guitar to the point where the guitar might as well be an extra appendage of his body. You know what I mean? Like it's just an extension of him hanging on a strap, making noise. Um, and you just, you don't see that very often to where it it's like, him and that guitar are so connected 
um, that you can just tell that every single note that comes out of that thing is just, it's pouring out of the dude's soul, man. Like, I don't know, maybe that's going too far. Maybe it's being extra, but that's really what it feels like. My goodness. So we still got four minutes to go. <laughs> Let me catch my breath before I press play again. Woo! does something that you don't see very often as well um and that he uses his middle finger a lot like he'll land on notes with his middle finger and use it for a vibrato he'll bend into notes with his middle finger which is as a guitar player i can honestly tell you that like i mean i don't even know probably I'm I'm bending probably ninety percent of the notes that I've been with my ring finger, um, and there's there's some of that in like an anchoring technique where you want the most control over it, um, and it just a lot of times it just like ergonomically makes sense with how you land in patterns and phrases, but he, it's like he's got the strength of ten men in every finger. <laughs> He can just wherever he lands, it doesn't matter. Um, and he he seems to land on it on his middle finger a lot, which is it's odd to me. Um, but it clearly he he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he wants. Um, and I'm not you know he could he could bend with his pinky, his pointer finger, ring finger, middle finger. It don't matter. It's going to sound awesome. Um, but it's just yeah, I, I've noticed that throughout this video that he. He lands and bends with his middle finger more than I would have assumed, I guess. All right. I don't want it to be over. We've only got like two minutes left. Man, this was an adventure. It is with the pre bend again. I love that resolution there.
stain is crazy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Whew. I love the way that that ended um, with that um, happy major resolution after all of 10 minutes of that. Um, it's cool just because, you know, the, the, the name of the tune, the Messiah will come again. It's this, you know, kind of brooding, somber, you know, minor blues jazz thing the entire time. And then it resolves into like this super, um, happy ending kind of thing at the end. So like the implications in the title are there. Um, but it's cool that that's how it, that's, that's kind of how the song resolved. Um, he is, he, he was unreal, just absolutely unreal. One of a kind legendary player. Whew. Terry, you did not oversell it when you said that this one was going <laughs> to leave me absolutely blown away, man. Thank you so much again for donating and making this video happen. Um, Gary Moore was just, ah, oh, he is, he's not, he, he is a guitar player's guitar player, right? But he's also like so good that I think it kind of transcends out of just like the musician's world to where like, even if you're not a musician, you hear him play and you're like, Oh my gosh, that dude was the real deal. Um, I mean, the amount of techniques that he put on display, um, was just, just insanity. Honestly. I mean, that was just a 10 minute, um, 10 minute masterclass just put on a clinic the whole time. Um, but none of it was, tasteless either like it was all super tasteful all super soulful tons of feel um you know even in like the shreddy parts they only popped up in good places um his musical vocabulary is just nuts and his musical common sense um, of where to place things um, dynamically, rhythmically, um, how he wanted to get in and out of different phrases or even just different notes. Um, his, his options were endless because he clearly, um, he just, he, he just mastered the instrument really. Um, I mean, that, that thing was in, it was in total control the entire time. Um, there was at no point that I feel like, oh man, I, I, I don't think he knows where he's going next. Like it just poured out of him, which is just so cool to see. I love to see it. Um, and he was so into what he was playing as well. Like you could just tell um, that he, the, the music was just, it was so important to him. The guitar was so important to him. And uh, you just, you know, you don't always see that. Um, but he, you know, Oh man, that, uh, what, <laughs> what a performance, man. I just, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that again. Just that, that's a, that's something you sit around and listen to when you just need to remember how cool the guitar is. Um, cause it, man, wow. All right, y'all make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and then make sure you hit that notification bell. So every time we drop new content, you guys can be made aware. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.